Hello everyone. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday and thank you Doreen for that reading of the passage upon which this sermon is based and, and the whole service is uh, focused. You know images of sheep and shepherds abound in our biblical stories. They were just a part of life at the time when Jesus lived and I have to confess that I've never been particularly excited about being described as part of a flock of mindless sheep. However, it seems I have been operating with a malicious stereotype and our whole culture has that stereotype, the mindless sheep. According to Barbara Brown Taylor, one of my favorite preachers and an acquaintance of hers, who actually grew up on a sheep ranch and talked about sheep a lot, knew sheep very well, she dispelled the myth that sheep are dumb. It was actually the cattle ranchers who started that rumor. Apparently sheep do not behave like cows at all. Cows are herded from the rear with shouts and prods from the cowboys but that strategy does not work with sheep. If you stand behind sheep making noises, they will just run around behind you. They actually prefer to be led. Cows can be pushed. Sheep must be led. And they are actually quite smart, a lot like us. They will not go anywhere that someone else their trusted shepherd does not go first to show them that everything is all right. Like the song you will be hearing as our closing today, the God we trust makes all things new, even in places we don't choose. That's why Jesus, as the good shepherd, has to go ahead of us. He is our pioneer going into places that we would not choose. Uh, but when we see him moving into those places, the question is, are we going to follow? Sheep seem to consider that their shepherd is part of their family and, that, and the relationship that grows between the shepherd and the sheep is quite exclusive. They develop a special language of their own that outsiders are not privy to. The shepherd's voice is key to this. As Jesus says in this passage, I know my own and my own know me. Sometimes sheep may go astray. They do wander off and fall into ravines. Sheep that are ill may even follow the voice of a stranger. There are so many voices out there vying for our attention many distractions to lure us away from the path, but Jesus promises that he will never let us go. His voice will bring us back. We belong to him, and our relationship with him is one of trust. This text is a strong word of assurance to each one of us in our struggles to be a faithful Christian. In our choices each day as we practice our faith by saying yes to some voices and saying no to others, Jesus is there going before us and leading us. Jesus seeks out the lost, those in need of being rescued, who are often the forgotten of our society. Jesus also mentions other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, he says, they will recognize my voice. We need to be careful that we don't reject those who hear the voice of the shepherd because they are different from us, sometimes very different, but they can hear the shepherd's voice. The relationship between the sheep and the shepherd is based on what the shepherd does rather than on what the sheep do. It's all about who the shepherd is rather than who we are. The sheep feel secure just to hear the voice of the shepherd. 
through that reassurance, we can turn and allow the shepherd's voice to speak through us as we reach out to those in our world who are lost and hurting. As Psalm 23 assures us, it is a voice we can trust, even when we are walking through a dark valley of the shadow of death. We can make it. Trust me, we can hear Jesus saying, we can get through this difficult time together. <laughs>